Hello guys, welcome to another Rob Dono video. Today, we are playing some golf in the morning. This is my best hole by a country mile, hence why I'm showing it. So, the first shot is a par three. We're on the green for birdie. This is unbelievable golf being played at this minute. See, lining up nicely. Tommy's on for par, I believe. I need to get this. I need to get this because I've had a horrible round. Oh. Christ, no. no. I, got a, I got a par. Um, and the rest of the golf was pretty bad. So here's here's a little bit of me playing. Okay. Okay. It's actually not done that bad. Right, we're at the office. And now let's get into GU analysis. Oh, hello there. We are back from the golfing trip, of which I'm only going to show my best hole. We picked up some Mackies, and now it's time to film this video, which is going to be out in about two hours. Sam's looking at me really scared because he's got to edit all of this. Hiya. <laughs> Happy Sunday. We've just gotten back. We are now going to do a quick EuroUSD and GBPUSD, maybe the XY, analysis for the week ahead. So all you guys are prepped with my thoughts on what I think could happen in the markets. Get yeah, our Mackies in Sam's office and stink it out. Lies, it's not happening. I've just finished my Mackies. Go and film your analysis now. <laughs> it's gunners. Okay, so welcome to my analysis of GVP USD. Now, for those new traders out there, I thought I'd very quickly show you my chart settings because I always get messaged about my colors and all of this good stuff. So literally here you go. Um, it's very simple. Yellow bullish candles, white bearish candles. The reason being, and wicks are gray. The reason being is because you shouldn't have a connotation of positivity to bullish or negativity towards bearish because then you're going to want trades to only go up rather than come down and obviously you want to short the market as well so let's actually get into the analysis also the background um has no no grid lines and it's just solid black okay cool so as i've stated multiple times in tiktoks we are not in a very nice market at the moment for gu however i've stated in the last few lives i've done with my community that price has technically turned a bit bearish price action prior was really really nice you were seeing solid bullish movements all coming back down up in this bit here into the discounted before making a strong move up again coming into discounted and again and then this is the last time that got put in this created technically a lower low but equal low nonetheless i guess um, and then price actually respected that high, created a new low again, and again respected. So what I'm expecting to at least happen at the start of the week is price to fall shorter. I'd be fairly surprised if price doesn't, but we're not really here to predict the market. It's more to give opportunity of where we can react to. So dropping down to the four hourly, obviously you've gotten a lot of buying pressure from here, selling pressure from here. Now, what I would have said and what I did say to my to my team a while ago is you've got all these equal highs here. You can imagine that when, this is obviously when the market is here, that when price takes out these highs, whether we react to this order block here or this imbalance here, we're gonna go to the opposite side, which is exactly what we did. But then equally, we've got this, all these equal lows here, which are also liquidity. The only reason that I'm a bit more bearish than I am bullish, um, and it's not all to do with GU as well, uh, You'll see when I do the Euro analysis that it looks a lot nicer on EURUSD. But the reason I am, more, I am more bearish is because this low got taken out, but we didn't take out the high that caused it. So this high has been respected, as you can see. We've then created new lows off of this, off, well, not, not yet, but it looks like we're about to create a new low. Obviously, this is due to news, um, but this is technically the current range that we're in. Um, so... Yeah, it's, it's, it's an awkward one because you've obviously got this high up here um, and this low down here. So what are we going to be looking at? So like I said, I'd imagine this imbalance will be filled. I'd be quite surprised if it doesn't now. Uh, we are obviously in a relevant area of, of buying pressure. I don't think we're going to get a big enough reaction to go all the way up. We might do nonetheless, but I don't think we will. Um, just, I just, I just think it's, it's it's come this far down. We obviously have bullish news for the dollar on Friday, 
really aggressive uh, and we've still got this fair value gap to fill. So I'm expecting to at least fill that fair value gap. Now, overall, I'm probably more, more bearish still, um, mainly because of where the weekly's at. So if we look at the weekly, as you can see, we're in an area of high, very high selling pressure. Uh, so from this, this kind of area here, which is obviously, you can even look at this candle, but I'm just gonna outline this whole area here. You see, we've wicked into that now and seen a rejection. The reversal hasn't been as prominent as I, we'd ideally want, um, but definitely if we're taking out this low, I'd expect us to be very bearish, at least for the first quarter, first two quarters potentially of the year. Um, and then maybe retest, like one, fill this imbalance, um, and two, start to retest the, these lows. Um, but obviously we, we wanna take out that low first. So again, I'll show you one EU in a second, but it's a lot nicer on EU, I believe. In terms of the POIs, you've obviously got this four hourly here. Um, there is a supply up here above this fair value gap. And obviously we're in this weekly supply already. So again, it's, 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 it's a relatively awkward one because there's a lot of liquidity here and there's obviously liquidity at these lows anyway. So if we, the, we've kind of got two outcomes that I'm going to be looking at. Let's see the price taking out this low, retesting, continuating down, and it's just a bearish trend and we're just actually breaking this out. Or because it's consolidated a lot, you could potentially see price fill this imbalance, react up here and then go the opposite side and actually end up bullish. That's a bullish outcome in my opinion. Again, I'd be quite surprised if price just went straight bullish and, and just didn't even disregard uh, this low here because it's not particularly strong. It hasn't taken out that previous high. So again, if I'm expecting a lot of bullish pressure, I do just think this is, needs to at least be tapped into. This bigger fair value gap. Sorry about that. And just had my Mackies. But yeah, the, these are my kind of areas that I'm, that I'm interested in. Um, obviously the style that I trade is very much intraday. So I'll be very much looking for positions that match my bias and that makes sense to me. I didn't trade the entirety of last week, mainly just due to the fact that we're in this range and I don't really know what direction it's gonna, gonna trade in. Um, one thing one of our traders and one of our mentors actually at work was saying, it's just in these kind of ranges, we're just looking for potential buys in the discounted and then uh, shorts in the, in the uh, premium. So obviously take that as you will. I'm hoping we don't stay in this consolidating range anymore. So like I said, I'm probably gonna wait for a breakout and then look for positions either from here upwards or if we break past this low, then go bearish. Um, but as of right now, I do believe there's a Fed speech as well on Monday. These, this is kind of my analysis. You can, you can break it down lower. I don't really see the point right now um, because of where we are. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it at the higher time frame for now. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my outcomes of what I think could happen. Um, equally, again, you've got this high, which this order block here that hasn't been mitigated. Uh, so either of these are, are pretty relevant and pretty strong, especially with the amount of liquidity that's that's laying just below and just above them. So yeah, they're, they're my thoughts on the market. Uh, now EU to me is a lot more, I've done a little bit already. Um, let's get rid of this. A lot more bearish or more obviously bearish. Reason being is because from here, You've had a clear, clear, clear change of character, which was caused by this candle up here, which had a nice fair value gap as well. So there is your demand, mitigated into, lovely reversal pattern. Looks like we're gonna take out this low as well, which is even more the confirmation that we could see a continuation to the downside. So then I would begin to start targeting this fair value gap here. Uh, we fill, filled this, well, this has already been filled actually, so I don't know why I'm talking about that. Um, we've clearly got a lot of selling pressure from this area, hence why we've probably seen the change of character come from here. Um, obviously when you go on the daily as well. You're, you're, I, like I said, ideally wanting this to be taken out. We are in an area of, sell, of buying pressure, but we've already had a reaction back upwards and prices just disregarded that and gone straight back down. So um, again, Weekly to me look extremely bearish and I expect th this low to get taken out as well. Um, but obviously, again, we can't exactly predict the charts. 
Um, so it depends obviously on fundamentals, depends on what, obviously we don't make the decisions as retail traders, you've got to react to what we can do. So what I'd look at is obviously stay on the daily. Um, if any of these highs get taken out, then I'd potentially look for a, if I, again, I probably wouldn't look for longs until something like that happened and then retest towards that way. Um, but even that is quite, quite kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, optimistic for the euro. Um, so yeah, price obviously changed back down this way. I come on all the way down from here. This new high, slight pullback there. New high, taken out, pullback. And you've had a bit of inducement in there. But I'm just gonna use this for now. And so forth. So yeah, it's not the best, it's not the nice, it's not been the nicest price action at all. You've had inducement here, inducement here, which to me, normally inducement would mean that we're gonna get a reaction kind of deeper into the order block. So that's my kind of bear, uh, bullish outlook, is that you could potentially look right at the bottom of this swing here, which is there, which is already tapped into and had a big reaction from, which makes sense why I got the right reaction. Um, let me drop down to the hourly, refine this a little bit more. There's your big impulsive move. Potentially look around there. Even that's not beautiful because that didn't cause, that wasn't the extreme low. That's all the extreme low here. So yeah, it's, it's looking like it's already reacted to or reacting to now where we're at. Is it actually at that order block? Yeah, again, it's that, it's that area there that caused it. So yeah, that's... That's it really refined down. Um, we actually haven't hit it yet. So in terms of the 15 and the hourly and the four hourly, we have hit it. You've got equal lows there, which um, your bullish look would potentially be a Asian range here. That maybe consolidates above this 15 minute. Sweeps all this liquidity, comes further into the 15. That's a reaction you could target. The other side of Asian, that'd be a decent position. But again, this is kind of against bias because for me, I'm looking very much at the higher time frame and the weekly, that's a, a, a bullish outlook, maybe to fill this fair value gap before we get a movement down. But again, it doesn't really massively, the only reason I'd look for potential longs is because of we are because we are in an area that has caused a change of character previously. So there must be buying pressure from here. Again, obviously I'm not gonna sit there and say price has to be bullish, price has to be bearish. For me, the weekly looks very bearish. The daily looks a bit more like there could be an initial influx from here of buyers, um, but equally, price has, has shifted bearish. Um, it's just whether this, this really bottom, uh, this extreme low of the swing <clears throat> gets respected, um, which I'd, I'd be surprised if it does. Again, not loads of clarity at the minute, on, um, on anything really, on um, where we are in the market. In particular, I trade GU only, so this is all I trade. Um, I might look into trading EU if, it's, if there's really no positions on GU. Um, but equally on GU, how I'm speaking about potentially seeing a, a bit of buying pressure from this low here, that's the same kind of thing that I just ran through with EU of it coming into this low and then potentially targeting the other side of liquidity, which is something you could do. Um, and that's a bullish outcome and that would happen coming further into this or maybe even sweeping past this and reacting to the low there. Which obviously you're not only going to have um, obviously session liquidity, structural liquidity, you also have a bit of SMC liquidity where people are trying to trade this order block. Um, but again, what I always do is be, be waiting for confirmation at least on the 15, looking for um, our clear change of character back to the upside, um, if not the hourly. So that's EU and GU, they're the bullish outlooks. The bearish outlooks are very much just seeing price obliterate these lows um, and looking for retests of potentially any kind of order blocks you can look at in here. Obviously, you've got a lot of selling pressure from there. Um, whether that's left completely, I won't be surprised if that is filled a bit. So we're in a bit of a, like I said, we're in a bit of a strange place. The reason we obviously got such a big reaction there, I think you probably would have had some news as well at some point. But yeah, these, these haven't been the best weeks, like I said. I haven't traded at all. I hope this is relatively helpful of just where I'm looking at. 
Um, I don't want to waffle on too much as I'm about to go live with my whole team and go through the exact same stuff. So um, that's kind of my thoughts, my bearish and, and bullish outlooks of what could happen in the charts. Um, probably looks nicer for shorts on Euro. Um, I can potentially see buying pressure coming from either of these places and then buying pressure coming from here for GU. However, if they're disrespected, then I'll massively be focusing on shorts. Okay, that's the end of that. I hope that will make sense. Right guys, that is the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed the analysis. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of golf and I hope you enjoyed all of our pretty faces. Subscribe, subscribe to my channel and follow my Instagrams and join WorkFX because um, just subscribe.